close your eyes and focus on your breath. Watch it all the way in, watch it all the way out. And then with the next breath, and then with the next, just stay right here with the breath. Give the mind a foundation, something solid it can depend on, in a place where you can gather your mind together. Today we're commemorating the anniversary of John Sawat's death. He passed away 13, year, passed away 13 years ago on this day. And it's good to think about some of the things he taught us. This is how the Dharma stays alive. It's people practice, and then they give us the benefits of their practice, and we have to try to, at the very least, to remember what they taught us and apply them in our lives. And one of the themes he was constantly repeating was the theme on restraint. We live in a society where there's not much restraint. People pretty much do and say what they want, look at what they want, listen to what they want, and the internet provides more and more things, so whatever you want to know, it's out, out there someplace. You've got to realize that there is a need for restraint in a place like this, because there are a lot of things that can pull your attention away, can attract your desires in directions that are going to be harmful to you, harmful to other people. And it's not just the world outside that has problems. The mind inside has its greed, aversion, and delusion. You've got to keep that under control, too. You can't just give into any impulse, because some impulses are going to be the, leading to suffering down the line, leading to regrets down the line. So the three areas of restraint that John Swat used to emphasize over and over again. First was restrain in terms of the precepts. In other words, you restrain yourself against anything that goes against those five precepts we took just now. Against killing, stealing, illicit sex, lying, taking intoxicants. You want to make sure that these animals inside you, the animals of greed, aversion, and delusion, don't come out and bother the, the neighborhood. You've got to have a fence to keep them in. At the same time, you need a fence to keep things outside coming in if they're not good. This is what restraint of the senses is. That's the second kind of restraint. In other words, if you find yourself looking at something that's giving rise to greed or aversion, well, try to look in a different way. Ask yourself, who's doing the looking here? Is your, is your wisdom doing the looking? Is your alertness doing the looking? Or is it your greed and aversion telling you to look here, listen there? And what are the results of looking and listening to those things? So you've got to look at this as part of a causal process. It's not that you're just sitting here perfectly innocent and things come in and give rise to greed within you. Sometimes the greed is going out and looking for things to get greedy about, looking for things to get angry about. So you have to exercise some restraint there as well. And this finally, the third kind of restraint is restraint in your use of things. In other words, try to be try to be frugal in the way you use your food, clothing, shelter. There's a lot of waste going on in the world right now, and of course there's lots of people, and the, it seems like the earth is getting smaller and smaller all the time. And that there's more and more of us. And at the same time, we all, each of us, have only limited resources, so you want to look at what your resources are getting used for. If it goes to just the comfort of the body, what happens to the comfort from last week? It's gone now. The delicious food you tasted last week, where is that taste now? It's gone. If you spend your time looking for that kind of comfort, it just disappears, disappears, disappears. But if you can realize okay, the needs that you have are only limited, then that frees up a lot of your resources to doing some real good for the world. People you could help, causes you could help, other ways you can be generous with people outside. If you're using up all your resources just for your own pleasure, you have nothing to share. When you have nothing to share, what are you going to leave behind in the world? So you have restraint in these three areas, restraint in terms of the precepts, restraint in terms of your senses, restraint over the senses, and restraint in terms of your use of things. Because you can live at peace with yourself, live at peace with others. It's like having a fence around the house. As I say, having good fences makes good neighbors. The wild animals in the neighborhood can't come in, and your wild animals inside your house don't go out and bother the neighborhood. That way we learn to live at peace with one another, and being, begin to get some sense of control inside our houses, so even the wild animals get tamed. So this is one of the teachings that John Sawat would stress over and over again. We, and even though he has passed away, we want to keep his teachings alive, both by remembering them and by practicing them. So we'll have something to pass on to others, so the Dharma stays alive, as with the passage of time. We have to have a sense of gratitude for the people who have kept the Dharma alive up to this point. We don't want to let it fall out of our hands in our generation. 
So do our best to keep it alive, both through remembering good teachings and putting them into practice, being a good example to others.